In this tutorial we will continue solving the exercises, the normalization exercises that we started in the previous tutorial. So now for question number four, we need to first answer if these two sets of functional dependencies are equivalent. To answer that question, we need to check first if f is a cover of g. If the answer is yes, then we check if g is a cover of f. If it is, if the answer is yes for both questions, then f and g are equivalent. To check if f is a cover of g, we need to see if f can logically imply all functional dependencies of g. So then, functional dependencies of g is, uh, the first one is a, c. So we check if f can logically imply uh, AC. So to do that, we do the A plus using the elements of F, and then for that we got A, and then A plus BD, and then once we get the B, we get the C. And actually we don't need to continue, because now we see that C is a subset of the A plus. Then the answer for this is yes, then we check if F can logically imply the other element of G, which would be C, then we do the B plus, which is the B, using the, the functional dependencies from F. So once we get the B, we get the C. Well, actually something else, the B, C is given. I didn't even have to check that. So the answer here is yes. And then uh, another element from G is B, B, C. So can F logically imply this? So then we do the D plus, which is the D, getting the D, we get the A, when we get the, the A, we get also B and D, and then when we get the B, we get the C. So then this is yes, why? Because B, C is a subset of B plus. Then we do is, I'm sorry, I'm messing it. So now we check the last functional dependency of G, can F get imply A, C, get C, then we can get the A, C plus. And we know that A plus by cell is given as A, B, C, D, which are all attributes from there, so this should be also A, B, C, D, and then D is a subset, so this is a yes. So now from here we see that F is a cover of G. So here the answer is yes. Now we need to check for is G a cover of F. If the answer for this is yes too, then F and G are equivalent. Then now we check if all attributes so now we check if all attributes I mean all functional dependencies from F can be derived from G so here we got just three attributes so we check if G can logically imply A B D so then we get the A plus, so we get the A plus, but now using the elements on G, so here we get A and C, and then when we get A and C, we also get the D, and then we check again, A, B, D. So now we get D, from D we get BC. Okay, so BD is a subset. So here is the answer is yes. Now we check if G can logically imply the second functional dependency, which is BC. I think we already discussed that that's given. BC is here and there. And the answer is yes. And finally, we need to check if G can 
automatically imply the last function of dependency dx. For that, we need to do the d plus using g. So for that, the d plus is d dc. At the b, we get the c. And that's it. Because there is nothing else, b, we get the c. A, C, we don't have A, C, we got the D and the B, so the answer here is no, then G is not a cover of F. Therefore, G and F are not equivalent. So the answer is no. Now, the next question. So here we were answering question A. So in question 4, we got a second question, which is find the minimum cover of G. So what we're looking is for G min. Now, what we know is that we, step number one, we check that the right hand side of every functional dependency has a single attribute. So here, let's see, we need the following. So we need A determine C, then B determine C, then D will get B, D determine C, and then a, C, determine C. Okay, so this is what I did. I copied those attributes. Now we look for redundancy. So for example, A, C, D, C, there is not a redundancy yet. But then we can see that We got B C D with C and C and A C gets D. Okay. So B determines C D determines B. So here we get that D determines B and B determines C. So these two can imply that D determines C, so this is redundant. Now A determines C, that means I don't really need the C here. I just need that A, the A will determine the C, but also I know that A determines D, so this we can substitute it with A determines D. And then A determines D, D determines B, B determines C. Then we don't need this either because using these three we can determine that. So the G mean is the set with B determines C, D determines B and A D. So that would be the answer for question number four. Now we still have, let's see, five more questions. So let's see if we can answer question five here. So for question five, we got the following table. A, B, C with the following dependencies. So we need to get the closure. So we're going to get A, B, C, and D. So let's see for question 5. We get A, B, C, and D. We need to get the closure. So we know 
and this is far n of i, so the initial value of this. And there we go. And look at the functional dependency. So a determines b, so we add in the b, and then we got the b, we got the c. So here we get in the b and the c and there is nothing else for the b plus the b plus number five b determines c and c determines a b so we want to get a b so this is also b a and c for the c plus So C determines A, B, and C. Look at that, nothing determines D. Then here is A and B. And for the D plus, there is nothing there. So we got that. Then um, for question B, we want to determine all candidate keys. So here we got ABC, ABC, ABC. We just need the D. The D is actually not derived. So then the candidate keys here will be the A with the D, the B with the D, and the C with the D. So using that information show all prime and non prime attributes, then we can say on C a prime attribute will be A, B, C and D. So all attributes so A, B, C and D. And non prime Will be the empty set. Finally, show the highest normal form of R. Then what we need to do is check every functional dependency that we have on phi. So here we check the left hand side. So A. Is A a super key? No. Then is this side a prime attribute? Yes. So maybe 3 and F. So we check for the next one. Is this a super key? No. But is the right hand side prime? Yes. Is this a super key? No. Are the attributes in the right hand side prime? Yes. So then this is 3 and F. So then question D. The current normal form is 3 and F. Okay, so on the next tutorial we will continue solving questions 6, 7, and 8. Thank you.